this video I'm going to go over a whole lot of electric guitars that work as a playable instrument for MIDI guitar as a controller. And that is me using my guitar via this software that is MIDI Guitar 3. And I'm also going to have to eat my words when it comes to the Native Instruments uh, Electric Mint guitar. It's a Stratocaster, it's their Session Player Stratocaster. In the last video I talked about it as unplayable. You have to do some stuff to get it to work. And when you do, it actually works and it's a really, really nice guitar. When I talked about the Native Instruments virtual guitars last time, I did it just from the perspective of having opened the instruments, having tried some of the presets and they just didn't make sense. I'm going to show you here why that is. Uh, these are the steps I had to go through to have them actually work as playable instruments for MIDI guitar as well. So for some reason, these instruments, I'm talking about the Native Instruments Session guitars specifically because I don't know about the rest but these instruments are transposed down one octave so not only am I getting an E2 for a played E3 on my guitar but I also have playable access to the key switches that are in this particular instrument and I absolutely don't want that because that means that when I'm playing something and say accidentally hit the low E string which happens all the time I will get some kind of articulation that I'm not interested in at all. There's no easy way for me to remove these key switches so the absolutely easiest way for me to do anything about this is to open up a transposer from the MIDI machines here in the chain. So I'm putting a transposer before the contact instrument on the chain and I'm putting this transposer up one octave. This way I'm starting to play my first E in the actual playable range here of the instrument. These are sort of naturally omitted from my possible playable range plus the fact that I'm playing the actual E2 and E3 on my guitar for the corresponding notes in the virtual instrument. More than this, if we look at what I've done here to the contact module that I'm opening that also has some settings to it that affects the virtual instrument. I've set the band range to 2, which is the default setting for the contact instruments. It's possible for me to go in and change this to 12 for standard setup. But since you see that there are some cogwheels rather than a wrench here, I don't have that opportunity actually. This is a locked instrument in terms of me going in and changing stuff like this. So I'm just going to have to match the band range to, to what I know is the band range set in these instruments. Also, you see here that I've set this module to no pressure. That's because native instruments have used pressure for something else than the dynamic aftermath of having struck the note. It's not interested in forming whatever comes after that note dynamically. It's set to vibrato if I remember correctly. So if I strike a note I will have a wide vibrato uh, tapering off as the string stops vibrating and this is not at all what I'm interested in of course. So the initial settings I have to do to even get started here are opening up a transposer, putting that to a plus one value, putting the contact container to no pressure and a band range two. And now I can start with the contents of the actual playable instrument if I want to. So 
now it's time to set up contact to work with something like an MP controller, or at least the polyphonic bends part of that uh, MP controller. We're not using CC74 here. And for those of you who followed this channel, you've seen uh, me set up like this in a video before. For the rest of you, I recommend you go see that. It's a lot more detailed than I will describe here. But I also recommend, of course, that you like, subscribe and follow this channel for the future content. In this case, we'll use the Mint Stratocaster and you'll set up in contact with six instances of this Stratocaster. It's not as horrible as you think. I think they're repurposing the whole sample base. So these six instances are all using the same sample bank. So it's not all that taxing on your computer as far as I understand it. You set these respective instances to receive incoming MIDI on MIDI channels 2 to 7 because that's how MIDI guitar is sending out its information. But that also means that there's some heavy lifting to be done, especially in the beginning with any library that you want to use with polybands. So if we take Electric Vintage, the Telecaster version of this session guitar, if we look at instruments here, the original setup would be two different instruments, a melody instrument and the Electric Vintage NKI. These are the two instruments that they come with. I have something called Electric Vintage Melody Temp for template, which is the first thing I did when I opened this instrument up. If we look at that, it looks like this. I'm not using anything of their own amps or FX or anything. And I'm also not using any sort of presets. I'm only looking for the sample bank as raw as I can get it. But I still want this particular instrument because this is one of the better instruments actually to, to have as a bass. If I want to use a plectrum or if I want to use the finger settings, this actually makes a difference. And also the fret position also makes a very large difference in how this instrument is coming through once you start processing it. I'm using the Neural DSP's uh, plugins in this video for most of the processing. I think I have some Arturia reverbs as well. Guitar settings, you can choose the pickup selection here. So if you want to use the bridge or the neck pickups, that's also important of course. This muted notes and stuff like this, this only pertains to if I want to use another sample base, which would be the muted samples, which is another articulation altogether. And I'm only staying with the first articulation. So this is just one kind of instrument. This is just the instrument played with open strings, no sort of effects put on it at all. Anything that I can do with that is what I'm interested in. And this is all the things that goes into this template. So once I've done this, I go to file, I go to save as, and I save this as a template. And once I have this template here, I can start build my six channel multi-instrument. And it's just as easy as duplicating this six times and just changing the MIDI channels here from two to seven as I described before. Then I go to file save multi as I call this electric vintage MPE but that's just my name for it. It's not really MPE obviously. I don't have CC74 and there's also a lot of other stuff missing but it's for me to know what I'm talking about. So then I have these multis that I can load and you'll see up here that wham I have my electric vintage multi-instrument here. Okay, I might want the electric sunburst. I have this Les Paul sunburst MP clean preset here and it's also a multi preset. So if I load that, wham, I have my electric sunburst on six channels ready to be played with these multi bands or with these polyphonic bands if I want to. This is how much or how little effort you need to put in to make these particular instruments playable. Now it's another thing to use stuff like the Orange Tree Samples instruments because they come fully ready to be used polyphonically. <laughs> Thank you. 
So any friend of this channel already knows that for me it's never a question of either or. I'm not talking about this unique, this special, this best uh, library for this or that. Uh, it's all a question of utility. If, if I like a particular part of the Texas twang, I'm, I have no problems layering that with, say, the electric vintage to get the best guitar for a particular case. I really love the idea of combining stuff. I have no problem at all combining a strap with a Les Paul if that's what's giving me the best sounding guitar for this particular purpose. <laughs> really interested in seeing what's around the corner from now because it's really a problem to sort of anticipate where we're gonna land. I'm even hesitant to guessing what's going to be possible and what's not going to be possible in terms of getting a great gent guitar for instance. I might have a problem seeing a really good chug gent guitar for a pitch to midi conversion and a sample based setup because of the way it's structured and because the things I know about how this works but I have no problem at all seeing a modeled instrument take that particular place in the market so yeah everything is still up there and really an interesting time to live and to be part of this right now so there will be much more to say in the future so until then thanks and bye <laughs>